Okay, and now here's the finished, uh, the opposite side. Uh, it's now completed. I basically did the same technique. And, um, to add a little variety on this side, I dry brushed the uh, seams of the car with this brush here. My kind of medium brush. And just streaked it down nice and softly to kind of enhance the realism a little. And to add that slight bit of variety. Um, so, uh, what will be next will be to do the ends. Uh, which are just as important as the sides. Oops. So, what I'm going to basically do, um, since the ends usually get a little more dirtier, also keeping in mind that the wheels usually pick up a lot more grime and spray it kind of up onto the hopper at the ends, um, I'm going to try to basically work the most of the grime at the base of the car around the uh, stirrups and just the very base of the car there is what I'm going to do and then I'm going to try to streak a little more rust down at the very top here and then a little grime on the ladder so I'm going to take a little more of my earth brown and I'm just going to dry brush that area and I'm going to try to do this as carefully as possible so I'm not my hands aren't in the way either um, it's kind of hard though I have this camera and tripod in the way so I'm going to hopefully I'm not going to be in the way here but just gonna try to hit the areas up. Kind of work it underneath very slightly. This color is pretty uh, powerful, so you kind of got to go easy on it. Kind of work it around there, and up the ladder. Just trying to do this as carefully as possible because I don't want to uh, damage the uh, ladder or any of those other parts because I don't really feel like repairing anything right now. Uh, that's definitely looking good. And uh, just kind of try to gather a bit of that grime in there on the floor of the inside there. <coughs> Might even go back and add a little uh, textured low with some baking soda later, but yeah, for now I, I think this is pretty good. I'm gonna try to build up where it's gonna count. Very good. Try to get the uh, porthole on the bottom too. Try to hit that. Usually a lot of grime relates around those parts. And then I'm gonna hit the top here. I'm gonna start streaking it down. Just real softly. Okay. Go up my string skin there. Just gonna try to get this as far as possible. Again, I'm trying to be really careful here because I don't want to damage these ladders. Uh, I think on the Atlas cars they actually do come off, but I'm not going to get too crazy with this. And I'm going to just hit this panel here. I'm going to try to pull up some of that. Get the inside panel here. So uh, that's that's pretty much it. You know, it's not too heavy but it still enhances a lot of the detail kinda of trying to hit the areas where it counts so um, that's the first end and I'm just gonna repeat that process on this end uh, and it'll be a little more tricky though trying to get in the back here because on this end of the car you have the brake wheel and all the brake rigging inside so I'm gonna try to work around that very carefully and take my time with that Okay. So uh, there's this end. You can see I kind of tried to make it slightly dirtier on this end, like a little more kick up, probably, on this end. Again, to add a little more variety to the car, get around that brake wheel. And uh, so that's pretty much this end of the car. Um, so what will be next now is the most important part, in my opinion, is the underbody. Uh, we're going to be hitting the trucks, uh, the coupler boxes, the bolsters. Uh, the bay area and this underbody of the car, the entire undercarriage. 
Uh, so we'll go ahead and move on to that in the next step. Now to uh, get these trucks off first, um, I'm going to be using my little screwdriver here, just so I can get the uh, truck off and screw it. That way we can access this part here, where it's going to get the basically the most grime buildup. And then um, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to weather the trucks as the last step. And when I bought this car, it was actually already somewhat weathered. The guy, the the previous owner, airbrushed these wheels, so they're pretty much ready to go. But for my road, I want to have all these basically to look the same using my own uh, colors. So I'm going to actually reweather these. So um, right now I got the stock. Atlas two-piece coupler system on this car still. Um, right now I don't have any of my uh, current KDs uh, to replace this. Um, I got some ordered right now and I'm waiting for them to come in the mail. So uh, for now I'm not going to bother with the couplers, but uh, um, I'm just, so I'm not going to unscrew this or anything. But I am going to go ahead and weather this. So again with my uh, medium brush, I'm going to grab a little bit of my black and I'm gonna mix this just slightly with a little earth brown to add a kind of an earth tone to the underbody of the car uh, rather compared to say just regular rust this is more of a grime color so I'm gonna mix this up and just basically dry brush it on there I'm gonna actually measure the gauge of the wheel again just to yeah, about right there. So, just gonna kind of softly build it up. You gotta get every angle of these when weathering. It's very important. That way, uh, you don't, uh, that way no one notices that you missed something. Um, being that it's the underbody though, I mean, it's not like that's where everybody's really going to be looking, but it's still good to weather every individual little area of the car. So you can see I'm kind of trying to aim for the area around where the wheels are going to be having a lot of kick up when they're rolling. That's where I'm kind of trying to focus on right now. Hit that coupler box a little bit. I'm actually going to try to see if I can get a better view here for you guys. There we go. So I'm just working on this box. <clears throat> I'm going to kind of streak it a little bit up the sides of the base. color. Alright, now I'm going to try to do the kick up on the base here, up here and here with this brush. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow up with a smaller brush with the same color and kind of build up a layer uh, for more detail. So, I'm just going to kind of, you can see I'm doing this real roughly right now. Now I'm going to switch to the little brush, and I'm going to try to kind of <coughs> pat it down a little. Looks a little more uh, subtle build up that way. See what I'm doing here. Switch this brush real quick, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, transfer some of that around here on the bay. Try not to bit too heavy. See just that area there. Get it built up around there too. Yeah, 
So it's, that's basically what I'm going for here. And uh, next I'm going to be moving into this area, ignoring the Made in China symbol there. I'm just going to try to streak it down a little. Yeah, I'm just kind of trying to work on the other end here. Just kind of try to build it up. So there you have it. That's pretty much what we're going for here. Um, and if it was a darker shade or like a darker car with a darker uh, car body color, what I usually do in this case, or in that case, is I like to take a little white and do my mud splatter technique. Uh, to add the mud splatter around, but since this is a lighter colored car, you wouldn't really see that too much or too well in this. So I'm not gonna do anything like that. But you can see I've I did the kick up on the bay here, and then around the coupler boxes and the bolster, where it's uh, the most important. And this is on both ends. And there is I know it's really hard to see with this camera and the lighting right now, um, but there is slight weathering on these bays. It's kind of streaked, but you can kind of see it there and then I kind of tried to dull down the uh, silver here these uh, silver bay doors and yeah, just a little bit of rust and some uh, a little bit of white as well um, so that did a pretty good job next step will be uh, reinstalling the trucks and then we're gonna go ahead and move on to the trucks themselves Alright, so as you can see, I now got the trucks back onto the car, and uh, I'm going to be using my mix of my earth brown with a little bit of black to uh, weather these trucks, uh, the side frames first, and then I'll finish up with the wheels afterwards. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, mix up my paint real quick, I'll grab a little earth brown. And it's not, uh, for most wheels, I find that they're usually not too heavy. He um, heavy black, moreover kind of a dirty brown color usually. So that's what I'm going to try to aim for here. And I got, I got my uh, smaller brush for this as well. And then you just carefully build it up. If any of this gets on the uh, the wheel faces or anything like that, or the uh, the part of the wheel where it comes in contact with the rail, that's okay. Because um, we'll go back with a Q-tip with some alcohol and we'll clean those off later. But you can see right now I'm just trying to weather the wheel faces. And I'm actually going to take a little bit of this color and kind of streak it up the sides a little bit and even hit this uh, little area here. I'm just going to get the most grime and then kind of try to follow up here. A little bit more of that kick up there. It's actually a little heavy so I'm actually going to take a a, a wet Q-tip here. Kind of try to blot that off. There we go. I'm actually going to turn this uh, light off so you can see better. You can see that. Oh yeah, that's definitely a lot better. So now I'm going to take my earth brown, uh, straight earth brown, with my brush here for weathering wheels. I'm going to take a little bit of it, and then I'm going to basically go around the face of the wheel on the car here with just some earth brown you can even hit the springs and the roller bearing uh, caps with this if you really want to to add a little realism So that's uh, the first wheel face, and then the last one here. Just trying to do this as careful as possible. You don't really want to jam the brush in there, because you don't want to go uh, too far up into there. You just kind of want to lightly touch the wheel face and then get the paint on there. Kind of try to gather it down a little. Let's 
Just keep working it a little. You can even hit the springs a little bit if you want. Uh, the springs sometimes will get a little rusty, so it doesn't hurt to add a little of the rust to that. Alright, so now that we've got the truck face and the wheels painted, I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, larger brush here with a little bit of white. And if you recall, I told you I was going to highlight these, and you'll see how the detail will just pop out once I do this. Just adding a little dust to the trucks. Get the wheel faces. Again, I'm not too concerned about it getting on the uh, the part of the wheel itself, it's simply because I'll clean those off later. But uh, I'll get a better view here so you can uh, see this. But if you can see that how it highlights the uh, details, like the uh, the bolts on the bearing caps, the springs, stuff like that. That's what you're trying to achieve with this. So that looks really good. Even actually going to hit it a little more, and then I'm going to I'm basically going to repeat these uh, the entire process for uh, all three of the remaining um, truck faces and wheel faces. All right, now on this end here, I'm going to add a little more variety uh, with my jack o' lantern orange, uh, representing a very fresh rust color, and I'm going to go in with this wheel face and paint it a different shade uh, to represent a new wheel. And you can see the nice thing about this paint, I have it slightly lightened with some uh, water. That way it kind of creates this effect here where it's not full coverage, but you can see that it, you can see how it uh, looks there. And that's pretty much typical of the uh, a new wheel. It's kind of, the rust on these doesn't really stick very well. It's just kind of the coating that it gets uh, once it comes in contact with water like that, I'm just the <clears throat> you go ahead and hit the bearing caps. Get this one more go around with a little more orange. So that's a new wheel right there. That's another fun uh, fun thing you can do with these cars to add a little realism, is to add new wheels like that. So I'm going to uh, repeat this on the opposite side of this truck and finish up the trucks and we'll move on to the next part, detail weathering. Alrighty, so I got all the wheel faces painted, I got the new wheel on, and um, what will be next is to add the highlights to the couplers, which is also very important. Now if you were uh, actually installing new couplers or you were um, anything like that or the car was already equipped with the couplers that you were using um, usually you want to weather the couplers but in this case since I'm not um, going to keep these stock Atlas couplers on the car I'm just gonna do only one thing to them and that's to add the highlights to them but this is basically the same thing I do with the couplers that I install on my rolling stock I got some more of my white and I just come over it like this and just give it a good once over just hit both sides and uh, hit the underbody real quick <clears throat> so you can see what that does it just kinda details the coupler a little better that's a another little detail that's nice to add to your models uh, to bring out a little more detail. Alright, so next up we're going to work on the detail weathering on the sides. So the next thing I'm going to do here is add rust spots and then add a little more detail weathering to this um, with my fine tip brush and I'm actually going to try a mix of techniques for this uh, rust spots. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to directly paint them onto the car and I'm going to try two different ways of actually adding like the streakage and I'm just going to cover one section for now but it'll be enough to give you the idea you can just see I just paint them on and then kind of try to add a few around the area you can see kind of like that
I'm actually going to put a few on this panel too. Not as many though. Uh, there we go. Just enough to give you the uh, idea. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take a soft bristle brush like this and then I'm going to kind of streak them down. Just real softly. Like this. You can see that what that creates. Um, that's one way I like to do it. Now, another way I do it if I'm looking for a little more detail with this is I'll take um, a fine tip brush again and kind of just streak it down nice and soft like this. It's kind of harder to do the technique with the smaller rust spots because the paint pretty much dries almost instantaneously. Uh, but if you get into a bigger rust spots, that's when you can use the uh, brush technique to streak them down. But for the smaller ones, I like to add the uh, streaks uh, with a brush, like this. Alright, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of black uh, to finish these areas off to kind of add a mixed color and I'm just going to add it to the very center of the top of the rust spot like this. Just like that. Do this again with this one. So there you have it. It's uh, pretty simple. You could even go over this um, with a lot of smaller ones, which you could do with the spray technique, which is basically the exact same thing as adding the mud splatter technique if you watch my uh, video. I don't really need to explain that again, but basically going over it and uh, spraying paint on the sides and then taking it and streaking it down. That's another way to do it. I just might actually go over this car with that, but... Um, you basically get the idea. I just like to have rust spots on a lot of these cars, and in this particular case, the prototype has these. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and get the uh, the rust spots finished up, and then I'll move on to some other little areas where we can add some texture weathering. All right, so I got the rust spots on, and uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my uh, fine tip brush again, and I'm just going to add little areas of rust patches to the top of the sill. I'm only going to do a few of these, uh, again, to save time, but you get the idea. Some, actually, of these center flow hoppers will actually have all of these uh, pieces like this with this rust patch around them. So that's another possible weathering option you can do with these, but I'm not only going to do a few of these for this side. Just to kind of build it up. And you just kind of blotch it on like this. Work it up, streak a little more down like this. See how that looks. I'm just gonna kind of try to work it down the sides of the car uh, somewhat gently. Streak it down a little. Gradually. I'm going to go ahead and hit this one here. Basically the same thing. Not as heavy though with this one. Just going to streak it down. A bit more from the top coming down. That. Build it up like and these little sills here. In this case, there's two of them. I'm just gonna work it into them like this. And I'm gonna bring it down again.
So that's another nice little technique you can do. Just gonna add a little streak there though. I clean that up a little. I'm too happy with that. And to finish up with this part of it, um, I'm actually gonna come back up here under the roof walk. And I'm going to try to build a little rust around this hatch here. I'm trying to build it up softly. And again, I'm using my fine tip brush, which is really, really nice uh, for this kind of weathering. I'm going to try to get a little here. I'm just working it down. There's a little patch over there that I'll hit in a sec. see those nice rusty patches they really really look good after you get them done um, if you take your time just try to work it around this hatch I might do this in a few other areas of the car but I'm just going to show you these two just to kind of work it I'm also going to actually turn this around real quick and hit the other sides of these So here's the car at the moment. Uh, it's really coming along as you can see. Uh, we've used a variety of techniques for this and um, it's really coming along. Um, so now what we're going to do at this point is we're going to do the final touches and that'll be um, adding a few tags along the uh, uh, bottom of the car and then finishing off with safety stripes. So we'll go ahead and get into this next step. Uh, so I'm not really sure how this is going to uh, turn out uh, being that my lighting and how um, this is going to turn out but what I'm going to try to achieve here is some graffiti uh, that's basically going to cover about the length of these three panels here uh, starting here ending about right here it's not that big of a tag and uh, uh, we'll get into that in just a second but uh, being that I'm moderate, uh, modeling a modern piece of rolling stock here and being that pretty much every rail car out there anymore has a graffiti in the modern day, um, I thought it'd be appropriate to add tagging to this car. Um, also because I wanted to cover some of the basic techniques for this and also because I know everybody else was kind of waiting for me to do some graffiti videos so I thought this would be a very appropriate thing to do. Now, um, getting into the tags itself, I'm, I'm using real tags here. This is the one I'm going to be using and um, what I'm going to be doing this isn't scaled down or anything but bigger tags that I'll do sometimes I'll usually like to take into my photo editing software and I'll shrink it down to HO scale and then basically with that uh, transfer it to the rail car but um, in this case I, I, I just drew it on and uh, I'm basically going to transfer it here um, it's a blue tag with white outline, so it should actually really stand out well. It should be nice uh, once it's done. Um, so I'm basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a fine uh, tip pencil like this, and I'm going to transfer it to my paper over here, and I'm basically going to try to make a little bit of an edge to the tip of the pencil so that it has a sharp tip. And what I'm doing is I'm basically just dragging this over a piece of paper at one side, and then basically flattening it and I'm not sure if you can see that now you're not you're not going to see that but I was trying to create that little bit of an edge uh, fine tip on this so I can draw the tag so we'll go ahead and uh, get started here I'm actually going to put this right here so it's kind of right in front of me and uh, I'm not sure how this is going to turn out I got again I got the camera and tripod in front of me but I'm going to uh, do my best here to not to screw this up too much, so I'm just gonna start drawing it on real slowly. It 
uh, you can also do this with pen but particularly I don't really like pen as much as pencil because usually it's a little bit harder to clean off and you don't really want it showing up on the model otherwise you'd have to take like several coats of paint uh, to be able to cover it over um, and I'm only going to do a few letters here by the way I'm not going to do the whole tag just for time's sake uh, but just enough so that you get the idea of what I'm doing so we're going to kind of try to bring it down here we're going to circle it around right here and it's not that perfect obviously but it's just a rough sketch just here I get the idea of where the lettering's actually going to be on the model when it's done that way we can go back and trace over it when we begin actually painting the model So that's pretty much it. I'll zoom out a little. Uh, you can see I, I basically got the design of the tag. And so there's the real one, and there's the one transfer to the model. And now it's not 100% accurate as of the drawings, which are actually accurate, but uh, uh, I guess it adds a little variety being that that tag's not actually on a rail car. Um, what I did was I went online and uh, pulled up some uh, tag photos in my archives that I saved just for this kind of usage. Um, so I guess the ver the variation in the tag shape and everything is actually uh, prototypical if you think about it. So I'm not going to bother changing anything else on this. Now the next step will be actually painting this and I'm going to be using acrylic again. Uh, I actually might make a special batch of paint for this. Um, I was, I was going to use my cobalt blue for this but looking in the pictures again it is a relatively lighter blue than say compared to cobalt blue which is uh, as you can see a pretty heavy blue color so um, I'm actually gonna make my own paint batch for this so I'll come back in a few minutes and we'll go ahead and start applying paint to this in the uh, next clip so as you can see I've made my own special batch of paint and this is a uh, pretty accurate to the blue that the actual tag has and we're gonna just go ahead and proceed to paint the actual tag itself sorry about the jerkiness I was adjusting my tripod and we'll go ahead and paint this on uh, real carefully. You just take your time with this. You don't want to rush anything. Because then you have to go back and fix stuff, which you don't really want to do in the first place. And you just go in and start painting it. And it's alright if it gets a little bit over the outline because we're going to go back with white later on. And we're going to cover up the uh, edges of the, de of the uh, tag uh, since it has the outline. So... And this is only the first coat of paint too, being that it's a pretty uh, light uh, light color, uh, being that it's a gray hopper, uh, it doesn't cover 100% uh, the first time, so you usually have to go back and paint, or add the paint colors a few times, so that's alright. Um, I'll just take my time with this, so... Let's see, I'm not trying to rush anything. You just got to take your time. It's the biggest, biggest thing with this. Just get a little there. <clears throat> All right, so here's the tag. I went ahead and finished the painting, and it's got the second coat on it with my custom blend, and. Uh, I'm actually going to take this right now and I'm going to, with my blow dryer, and I'm going to just kind of dry it off real quick to kind of speed up the process. So, um, in the next step, I'll add the white outline and probably a little bit of black highlights. And I might even add another tag here uh, to this end here. So, we'll come back in another minute. Alright, so we got the tag painted in, and uh, in the next step, I'm actually just going to. Uh, add the highlights after this uh, paint dries. 
Um, but for now, I'm going to move on to another section here and add another tag um, with some more drawings that I have. And I'm just going to add it here on the car. So, I might actually mask that off. I'm actually going to mask that off real quick. So I'm actually just going to take my piece of tape here. I'm just going to mask this little area off where the car data is. Uh, that way, when I uh, do the tag over it, it looks like um, it will was patched over. Like they uh, took a stencil and redid the data on the side. Uh, just to add a little more realism to this. So we'll go ahead and add the tag uh, with my pencil again. I'll put this down real quick. <clears throat> yeah, real quick. Uh, again, here's the tag, the real one. So that's what I'm going to be adding to the car. Okay, so there's tag number two, and I'll go ahead and paint this in with a different shade. Um, the real tag is about an orangish yellow, so that's what I'm going to do here. And I'm actually see if I can try to do a fade technique here where there's two multiple colors. So we'll go ahead and uh, get that done. All right, so now both tags are painted, and um, what I'm going to do next is focus on the first one, and I'm going to go ahead and start adding the detail to it in the form of the outline. And then we'll come back and add some other details later. So, I just got my white acrylic and my very, very fine tip brush here, and I'm just going to start painting the outline real carefully. I'm actually just going to take it in this area here so you can see it better See, I'm uh, kind of trying to apply it roughly right now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back with some more blue and then finish off these lines to clean them up a bit and to shrink them down slightly. And then it, the tag will look a little more appropriate. And then we'll move on to this one and we'll complete this one. So now I'm going to uh, basically come around and I'm going to do the black, uh, excuse me, the black outline around the tag. I like this.
Okay, so there's basically the finished tag, and I just went around, added the black outline, and then uh, I went in and cleaned up a few of the edges a bit with some more white, a little bit more blue, uh, finished the outlines. So we'll go ahead and uh, move on to this one, and what I'm going to do, again to save time, I'm just going to paint uh, kind of a reddish oxide color in here, and then I'm going to add the orange to the tag itself at the very base of it, and then I'm going to go and add the outlines and stuff like that. Okay, so here's the tags as of now. On the, the gasp tag, um, I added the maroon background, and I added the yellow lettering, and then the outline for the black is done. And then we'll go back with some highlights later, but right now I'm going to add the second color, which is orange, uh, to the base of the tag, like this. might actually switch to a dark orange I don't know this is doing pretty well though So, there's the orange. Alright, so uh, as you can see I got the tags done. And now what I like to do is I like to take a fine tip sharpie and kind of do like um, the smaller tags like this. And I'm just kind of making these up right now. So, it kind of helps to add a little realism to add those as well. I'll actually add a few more, um, even on maybe the other side of the car. And um, so in the next bit we'll go into safety stripes and I'll discuss that for a little bit and we'll conclude the video. Alright, and now onwards to the safety stripes for the last step here. And what I'm going to be using, um, I probably shouldn't say just right yet, but uh, obviously looking at it you can probably tell what it is. But anyways, um, for a while now I've been using microscale decals uh, to for my safety stripes. But uh, what I found for one thing, not only did you have to cut each individual stripe out, um, but uh, you ran out real quick. Um, being that a lot of the uh, car, a lot of cars, even big ones, use a lot of safety stripes, and they're on both sides as well. So you actually use a lot more stripes than you think you're going to need. So um, it was getting expensive for one thing, and I was kind of getting frustrated with the decal use because not only because you also had to factor in the time to apply each individual decal and using solvent solution and all that and etc. So what I actually uh, actually recently discovered was to use um, reflective tape which is this stuff right here and it's uh, just about kinda like um, duct tape you could say but it's not exactly duct tape so um, what's also nice about this stuff is that it has these lines. I know you can't see it even if I zoom in, but there's lines in the tape. Oh, well, maybe you can see it, but there's lines in the tapes. You can. It kind of helps for you to cut them out uh, when you're cutting them out. But uh, this is what I'm going to be using for my safety stripes, and it's not that thick either, so they go on. Plus, it's sticky. Uh, it's it has the same uh, adhesive like like uh, duct tape. So it sticks on really well. So I'm just gonna measure out. And that looks about right, right there. I'm just gonna use this back end of this old file and then a brand new hobby knife blade. And I'm just gonna make a once over, is all you need. And just cut them out. Oops, 
sorry. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut each individual stripe out and then we'll transfer it to the model on the other bench. Alright, so now we'll add the safety stripes to the car. I got them all cut out in little strips and we'll go ahead and apply them. I'll only do a few of these uh, just to save time. And I'm using my knife again to pull each individual stripe off the sheet. And then I'm going to transfer it to the model. Just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue to apply them. Alright, and here's the opposite side. I got the safety stripes and they basically just cover over the tags, which is also realistic. Because usually if um, there's already safety stripes on the car and um, uh, someone comes and uh, tags over them, they'll usually be really quick to put it in the repair shop and they'll basically put new stripes over the graffiti. So I thought that, was, that would be uh, appropriate and realistic. So that looks really good. And it only takes uh, literally about a minute's worth of effort to cut uh, pieces of tape like that to size and then stick them on and burnish them on so that they stay flat and flush with the sides. So it's a really nice technique and I'm glad I discovered it recently. Um, I know a lot of other models have been using it but I just stuck to the decals for uh, since I started but uh, I am definitely think I'm going to be switching to this tape now because it looks a lot better and it's reflective which is nice. So that's pretty much um, the car it's basically complete at this point. Um, there is this. I did add this new tag here. This was the last one I did. And um, off camera, I'll probably put some more tags on this side. But for now, I'm just going to have this uh, like it is. So here she is, the finished product. Um, and this car, uh, in total, took me about two or three hours to complete. Um, but the beauty of vi uh, modern video editing is that you. Uh, saw this car get completed in less than a few minutes so, which is nice on your end um, but uh, you know that's pretty much it uh, we covered some graffiti uh, we did the detail weathering like uh, rust spots um, we added the safety stripes stuff like that we did a little patching um, so that is a, I think this is a really good uh, good video basically for basic weathering like this. Um, so I hope it helps you out. Um, if you have any questions, anything regarding weathering, anything like this, or if you were confused about something that you might have seen in the video, anything like that, please feel free to contact me and I'll do my best to answer your questions on this. Um, so in the next video we'll be discussing tank cars. Um, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.